Hey y'all, I am about to go finish up something that I should have finished up two weeks ago. I'm going to hopefully go finish planting some things in my garden, but I have something very exciting to tell y'all. Every year when it starts to become spring, I'm like, I'm going to stay on top of everything this year in my garden, all of my weeds, my planting, and somehow it doesn't happen and I've got to start pulling out some of these weeds and grass or it's going to start taking over. I have really big farm dreams for our small farm and some of them seem attainable and some of them are like oh my goodness I don't even know how in the world that can happen but I need to figure out how to make that happen. Well this past weekend one of my really big farm dreams came true. We bought an A2A2 dairy cow from Justin Rhodes. All right, we're about to unload maple. Dad is backing up into the gate in the pasture and I'm gonna unreal the fence and get it where he can, um, we can open it for her to come out. Come on. All right, come on. All right, stop, all right, stop. There you go. Come on, come on. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give our cow some alfalfa, like right over here, and then we're gonna let maple out. She'll see it so that she'll hopefully go ahead and come out of the pen. crazy cow lady. I could have like 500 cows and still want more. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of person you ever have enough cows. But we got another one, but there's something really special about this one. There's a lot of things that are really special about this cow. She comes from a grass-based genetic line, meaning that um, she she's bred to produce on grass and she will thrive on grass. And so if you take a cow that's been eating grain its whole life and is bred to eat grain, eat grain then if you put it on grass, it's gonna lose condition and die because that's not what it's bred to do. That's, it's bred to, it's bred to produce on grain and not grass. And so you need to be selective in your breeding and culling for genetics that will thrive in your management. And my management is 100% grass. So I need to choose genetics that, like I said, thrive in my management, which is exactly what this cow is, which is super duper special because that's really so hard to come by in our area. Are you excited about our new cow? Yeah. You are? Yeah. You so excited? Yeah. You were just asking mommy last week that you told her that you wanted some new cows? Yeah. Yeah? I have recruited my kids to come out here to help finish planting and pull weeds. you may be thinking well big deal you already have a dairy cow and yes well I do love the dairy cow that we have right now and she came from an amazing friend of mine who has an amazing organic dairy farm she's not a2 a2 I'm actually gonna let Grace is gonna do a quick breakdown lesson for you to kind of educate you on the difference between an a1 and an a2 dairy cow okay. so it all has to do with basically the breakdown of the amino of the amino acid protein chain and a1 milk it does not have very strong bonds and it can break apart very easily and so when it breaks apart then it causes inflammation in some people but a2 milk it is in a2 milk it is bonded more tightly and it never it doesn't come apart and so it doesn't cause any inflammation and fun fact 
goat milk and human milk are naturally A2. So that's why a lot of people can do goat milk, but not regular cow milk. So I know some people have an A2 dairy cow, it may not be a really big deal, but like what Grace just said, if you're pr prone to inflammation and I'm prone to like autoimmune issues, it is actually a really big deal. And so that's why I have been wanting an A2 dairy cow. And now we have one. She is not bred, her name is Maple, and we're hoping to breed her hopefully around August. Oh, Grace, Grace says July. So somewhere around July or August, we're hoping to breed her.